This is continuation of the lecture shock one. We will now look at some of the pitfalls that we are likely to encounter in the management of different kinds of patients in shock. Welcome. There are the following pitfalls that can complicate the management of a patient in shock. The first one is when we equate blood pressure to cardiac output. Blood pressure does not equal cardiac output and we need other better ways of managing, of uh, checking for perfusion, like uh, using the urinary catheter and monitoring other signs. Secondly, old age. Old patients actually have a myriad of normalities, especially cardiovascular, and they do not respond the same way as young. For example, elderly patients usually have a rigid blood vessels and it's difficult to record their blood pressure, and they tend to be hypertensive. And small changes in pressure will lead to significant abnormalities. Thirdly, in children, so extremes of age can pose pitfalls. In children, the cardiovascular reserve is usually higher, meaning that children do not show significant changes, uh, for example, in mental status until significant blood loss has occurred. In pregnancy, the blood volume is usually higher and uh, pregnant women also don't respond as other patients do in that the response will be sort of muted. They will be normal for a long time but the effect on the baby is usually much more adverse. Athletes. Athletes usually have a higher cardiovascular reserve and the heart rate does not increase significantly even with significant blood loss and so we must note this when we are dealing with young people who are fit and athletic. Then there are some patients who are on beta blockers and calcium channel blockers and these drugs affect the cardiovascular system. For example, beta blockers will cause bradycardia and uh, the patient they will not respond to tachycardia as expected. Calcium channel blockers, the effect is on the blood, the peripheral circulation, where the blood vessels do not respond as required and uh, the patient will suffer adverse effects of shock early. And patients who are on aspirin have abnormalities in their clotting mechanism and they will not uh, respond the same way. And finally, patients who have a pacemaker, they cannot respond to blood loss in the same way with tachycardia. In summary, about hemorrhagic shock, we must ensure that the patient has adequate ventilation and oxygenation, we must control hemorrhage, and that is by checking and splinting long bone fractures and applying direct pressure to any bleeding points. We give crystalloids um, at a rate of 20 mL per kg, uh, normosiline or ringus lactate. And if there's no response, we must group and cross match and give blood. And we must give blood and we must treat arrhythmias with the synchronized cardioversion early. We then go to other causes of shock. And uh, cardiogenic shock can occur in trauma as a result of chest trauma, for example or in patients who have a coronary artery disease. So we must provide uh, supplemental oxygen and uh, positive end uh, expiratory pressure to reduce pulmonary edema. So this means we need to put the patients on a vent. Cardiogenic shock, the patients will require uh, anotropic support and we can give dobutamine or dopamine. We must seek to treat the cause, usually coronary artery disease, and we arrange for thrombolysis and percutaneous transvenous coronary angioplasty or other indicated treatment. Septic shock occurs 
in uh, later cases in patients with trauma this can occur later when uh, sepsis are set in as a result of neglected gut injury with peritoneal contamination it's not a common cause in early cases and when it occurs we must manage it the same way we may ensure oxy adequate oxygenation and maybe even ventilate the patient we give crystalloids and we give antimicrobial therapy and surgical treatment as required and because it's a form of distributive shock the inotropes do work neurogenic shock occurs for example in cord compression with the paraplegia and it presents with the bradycardia as a result of decreased vagal tone, vagal tone and with the hypotension even without overt blood loss and the treatment is use of vasopressors and fluids as well and use of atropine might be necessary in summary therefore hemorrhage is the commonest cause of shock in trauma patients in shock need a good airway and supplemental oxygen and we need to manage hemorrhagic shock aggressively and we must pay attention to vital signs and after every intervention we must reassess the patient to see the response to our management we must always reassess the patient thank you for your attention